Poetry Should Make Music with Words by Carol Boston Weatherford. Students should have read the poet's books beforehand and understand the difference between an author and Arthur so that she doesn't have to sketch the famous aardvark and her own face on the board and apologize for not wearing a furry costume. School visits should begin with the poet's name, chalked in big pastel letters on the pavement, kindergartners greeting her at the front door, and fifth graders offering to lug her gear. The hall should be adorned with students' art, portraits of civil rights leaders, jazz musicians, and sports heroes inspired by the poet's books. School visits should kick off with hot herbal tea, cinnamon bagels, cream cheese, and red grapes, and a cozy chat with the boys' book club. Sessions should be in classrooms, libraries, multi-purpose rooms, or in a pinch, auditoriums, but never in gyms with bleachers and bad acoustics. The room should be decorated with cardboard box robots, rocket ships, and puppet stages straight from the lines of the visiting author's poems. Primary grades should come first thing in the morning, not at 1 p.m. after just releasing butterflies on the Friday before Easter break. Programs should crisscross the curriculum with poetry, movement, and music, tambourines, triangles, and drums, and a rain stick that zigzags from front row to back, so no child whines. I didn't get a turn. The poet should show students her early poems and have them chant her mantra. Poetry makes music with words and then show them why and how. The repertoire should include rhyme and free verse, where students chime in on cue as poems chronicle freedom fighters, first ladies, Olympians, presidents, polar explorers, and pioneering artists. The poet should not skip shameful chapters in the American saga, such as slavery and segregation, and should show slides of documentary images attesting that the inhumanities really happened. The poet should use music as a balm, a spiritual or protest hymn that lets students lift their voices. After back-to-back -back sessions, the author should relax as students stage a reader's theater of Birmingham 1963 or Freedom in Congo Square, complete with songs. The poet should have lunch with 12 lucky students who stare at her as she eats food prepared by the PTA. Each session should conclude with questions, not about her income, trillions, age, 49 plus, or favorite color, blue, but about research, writing, publishing, and whether she is returning tomorrow. The poet should touch both the child who struggles with reading and the one who hands her an original poem on notebook paper. The celebration should come to an end with banana splits, sprinkles, and smiles and perhaps an after-school workshop or reception for parents and faculty about writing recipe poems or blues. Afterwards, students should send the poet thank you notes, gushing about how much fun they had with the poems and percussion, and admitting that they expected to be bored, but are now her biggest fans.